Hello everyone. So the first thing to do on any job that involves electrical power or working on an electrical piece of equipment is unplug the power. So the problem I'm having with this compressor is that I can't adjust the bandwidth on the air pressure switch. There's a cut-in setting and a cut-out setting on these switches. So the cut-in setting is the low end of the band and when the, when the air pressure drops below that setting, that's when the compressor kicks on. And then the cutout is the high end of the band, and when it hits that high pressure setting, that's when the compressor cuts out. It stops running. The problem with this one is, right now, I can adjust the high end. There's a screw, there's a screw adjustment to bring it up so it'll cut out at 125. But when it's set for 125, it cuts out at 80 PSI. And it should be 95 PSI to 125 PSI. I had this open before. There was a loose part in there floating around that I, it clips onto the bottom of the switch in there. If you've ever taken one of these switches apart, it's next to impossible to put back together again. I managed to get it back together again, but that little part fell right back out. It clips on, it unclipped easily and fell out. So it's time to replace this switch. I bought a new one and it's preset to the uh, 95 to 125 pressure band. It even says it right on the label here, 95 to approximately 125 PSI. So I'm just going to go ahead and change the switch out. The thing's 36 years old. It doesn't owe me a thing. There's just one screw on the back that holds this plastic cover. And then there's a catch on the front. So this is a 240 switch. There's actually two sets of contacts in here, so it's going to break both hot, hot leads coming in. And there's the black and the other black. So it's the black from the cord and the black from the motor. And the same thing here, the white from the motor and the white from the power cord. There's a plastic compression grommet on each side on each cable coming into here, each cord. And, uh -huh. When I pulled this cord out, I exposed the uh, screw down below here, the ground screw, for the ground wire. I have to unscrew that all the way because it's a ring terminal as it should be. That's the power cord. And it turns out that the ring terminal from the motor cord was under the same ground screw. So I just need to pull this plastic compression bushing out of here. Just trying to squeeze it together with the pliers and then pull it out. Trying to be careful not to damage anything because I just want to reuse it as is. So you know how when a compressor stops, it's running, building pressure, and then it stops, and you hear it release air. It goes psh. That's right here. There's actually a valve in here that when this switch switches off, it hits that valve, and it unloads the pressure from the from the top of the head.
and I got a new one and a new one came already pre-mounted on the new switch so I just need to re remove this here I'll loosen this up a bit up here So this is the new switch and you can see on the bottom of it there's like a hex to threaded nipple with a hex uh, nut. And it happens to be three quarter inch. That's how this is mounted. That's the only thing that holds this on top of the manifold here. So I'm going to use a bigger adjustable wrench to hold the, the manifold so it doesn't turn because it's just pipe threaded into the top of the tank. This hasn't been loosened in 36 years or more. So it might be a little hard to loosen it up. Had to get some gloves. That's going to hold that wrench. I couldn't have loosened that without a pipe. There it is. This says cut in 100 PSI, cut out 125 PSI. It was actually cutting in at 80 and cutting out at 120. So it's definitely old and shot. So the new switch needs the addition of a quarter inch close nipple. Fortunately I have one. I wrap that with a couple wraps of Teflon tape. And screw it in. I'll snip that off later or pull it off. Also need to wrap this side with Teflon tape.
there's a couple of grommets they supplied. So they don't have the slip-on tabs on here, but I have a feeling these are removable from the old switch. So let's see how that works out. Yeah. I'll transfer these four tabs under these four screws. Okay, I'll start with the motor lead. Actually, I need to get them both started because I have to put them both under the same ground screw. both of these ring terminals under the same screw. And that's for the green ground wires. Jeez, pretty hard to get in there. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Here's a better look at it. This is just aluminum tubing, I think. It's very soft and bendable. These are hot right now. I plugged it back in. The circuit breaker's turned on. There's two adjustment screws on this pressure switch, which I didn't have on the previous pressure switch. So one of them will be to adjust the overall uh, range up and down, and another one will change the bandwidth. So I'm going to just power it up, see what it goes up to. If it tries to go over 125, I'm going to stop it. Okay, it stopped at 120, so a little low. Now I'm going to release air and see where it cuts back in. Okay. 
Okay, so it cut out at like 85, so the whole range is low. I need to adjust it so it comes up to 125. So I think that'll be right here. I'll try that. It's like a, it was about three quarters of a turn. That cut in at about 123, it looks like. Uh, as you look, as you stand in front of the compressor or on the side of the compressor, like I am, and, and look at it here, there's a screw in the center and a screw on the left. I'm adjusting the screw in the center. Do like a quarter turn. I think that'll get it up to 125 now, and I'm going to let some air out now and see where it cuts back in. So it cut back in at just a little over 120 again. I still want to bring that up to 125. So I'll make another adjustment here. That's a quarter turn. I'm going to go another half turn, so that's another three quarters turn. And now I'll let some air out and see where it cuts in. Well, that three quarters turn was too much, I'd say. It's higher than 125. I'm going to back it off just a touch. Although it's actually leaking down a little. It might be good right there, actually. Okay, I'm going to tweak this screw on the left a little bit to try to bring that cut in a little higher. I was just experimenting at this point because this cheapo switch didn't come with any instructions. I messed around with it for a while before I quit for the day. Instead of showing all the adjustments and test runs, I'll jump to an explanation of what I learned. Okay, here's what I figured out. The diagram shows a pressure scale showing the range with the cut in and cut out pressures indicated. The range of the switch moves up and down the scale by adjusting the center screw. The differential pressure is the difference between the cut in pressure and the cut out pressure. The specified range on my new pressure switch is shown in this example. It's supposed to start the compressor at 95 psi or lower and it's supposed to stop the compressor when it reaches 125 psi. The first time I started my compressor with the new switch it started at 0 psi as it should and stopped at 120 psi. So I adjusted the center screw to raise the range so the compressor will stop at approximately 125 psi. However, that only increased the cut-in to 90 psi, and I needed 95 to 100 psi. The factory preset differential pressure was 35 psi rather than the 30 psi it should have been. I discovered the other screw will adjust the differential pressure, but only on the high end. In other words, it increases the cutout pressure, but it doesn't change the range level setting. So, for example, I could adjust the cutout higher, but that didn't increase the cut-in pressure, 
which is what I really needed it to do. What I really needed was to decrease the differential pressure to around 25 psi if possible. And there's no adjustment screw that will do that. But I discovered another method that worked. There's a spring paw right here on the stamp steel pressure plate that the air pressure diaphragm pushes up against from below. This spring provides tension between the pressure plate and the switch contact actuation plate. My theory was that if I could knock the top of that spring paw back a little bit, that would reduce the spring tension that holds the switch plate back as the pressure drops, thereby allowing the contacts to drop sooner which is what I needed them to do. I took the old pressure switch apart and had a look inside to see how it works. I could be wrong about the details on this, but bending that pawl back did make a big difference. Twenty-five on the nose. The cutout's at 125 PSI. It doesn't get any better than this. The cut-in pressure is 100 PSI and the cutout is 125 PSI. That provides a pressure differential of 25 PSI. This meets the original specs from when the compressor was new. I'm satisfied with that. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.